Good morning. So Vacation Bible School this week was themed on the Lion King, and that's why you heard what you just did. That's why we had the elephant and the giraffe, and you'll be hearing a lot more about that. Vacation Bible School was um, intentionally kept a little smaller this year because of, of COVID restrictions. So normally we go from three years old all the way up to uh, sixth grade. This year we had it from just finished kindergarten to having just finished fourth grade. So we had um, a smaller number. We did everything outside. It was wonderful. It was fantastic. A lot of, a lot of uh, uh, enthusiasm. And I thought that, that a smaller group might feel like it did not. Um, because of the ages that we had, at least half our kids every year are from our preschool. We couldn't have any of the preschool kids because they were too young. So, um, but it was a blast, very active. So thanks to everybody who, who participated, everybody who sent kids, and I'm sure you will hear uh, more about that, but it was, it was a great, a great week. Uh, we also had a slightly shorter week this year. We, we usually do five days, we did four days. Uh, again, the same kind of, of, um, of thing, uh, considerations in mind, but uh, absolutely a tremendous time. And uh, instead of raising money for, we always raise money for a, a different charity. This time, uh, we adopted an animal from the Pittsburgh Zoo, and the kids voted which animal they would they would choose. We had three choices: uh, lion, elephant, and hippopotamus, and and they all got lots of votes. But the lion apparently won because making appropriate since it was the Lion King week. All right, so just uh, two other things I just want to remind you, things that we have had uh, continuing going on. The Unmasked group. Um, yeah, Pastor Heather, I don't know what's up with that. We are missing six out of ten of our ceiling lights. I was playing with them this morning. I can't get them to do anything. But, but uh, so uh, we, our Unmasked group run by Pastor David Matthews continues to meet. They will meet in the, in the lounge. Uh, and then also uh, I invite everyone a painting class that I've been conducting at the Hub. I've done two of them so far. They are Thursday nights, uh, July and August. And then once we get to the end of it, we'll see um, if there's a way to schedule something maybe going forward. Things will change, of course, once school starts up again and everybody's schedule gets back to, to busier. But um, that's for now. I'm going to invite you to come. We've had uh, um, four people the first time, seven people the second time. Always hearing from more people who might be joining, so uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Is there anything else that needs brought to the attention of the congregation? All right, well, we begin with our prelude.
We begin our morning's worship with the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all saints, God of all sinners, hear our prayer. We would like to be saints, holy, good, patient, and loving, but we end up more like sinners, failing, selfish, and mean. You, O oh Lord, see us as human, love, flawed, trying, failing in some things, and succeeding in others. In all of this, forgive the wrong we have done and bless the good we have accomplished. Keep on loving us and helping us and molding us more and more into the image of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. In Christ, we are forgiven. We are set free to go out into the world to be the loving, gracious, hopeful people of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's join together, please, for the prayer of the day. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd our people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You can have a seat. It is now time for the children's sermon. Good morning. So um, this week with Vacation Bible School, our theme was Lion King. And we looked at some uh, themes that become biblical themes throughout the movie. And one of them was um, Lion King. And so we made crazy crowns and um, talked about being a king and how Jesus is our king and Messiah. And uh, so I wanted to share just a little bit about that with you. Um, the Lion King was Mufasa at the beginning of the movie. And he said, uh, while others search for what they can take, a true king searches for what he can give. And this is kind of played out through the, through the story. Um, he teaches Simba, his son, how important it is for a king to care for the needs of others more than they care about themselves. And um, he uh, shows Simba how to make the kingdom a great place uh, for everyone to live in. Um, when Mufasa was king, uh, the land was green and fruitful and everybody had enough to eat and, and life was good. And then when um, the, the bad guy Scar takes over, uh, everything dies. Um, the, the grass dies, the food dies, the animals are, are starving, um, and things get really bad. And it's a pretty, pretty vivid um, contrast between a good king uh, makes a good life for people and a bad king makes a bad life for people. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, the best kingdoms are those who have a king who loves them. And um, so we translate that into how Jesus is our king. We have a king who loves us tremendously, who loves us more than life itself, and um, who, who seeks to give us good things and to make life um, good for everyone, not just some people, um, but for everyone. Jesus goes big. He, he's, he's, uh, he's interested in saving all people, the, the whole world of people. And um, that makes him this amazing king of heaven and earth. And um, for those of us who are part of the kingdom, which we are as believers and as baptized children of God, we're part of the kingdom. Um, he encourages us to, to share in um, making the kingdom a, a good place for all people. Um, 
And uh, so, we, so we need to think about how we uh, respond to this. Um, do we go after everything we want? Do we whine when we don't get what we want? Um, do we take things and keep them for ourselves? Um, what Jesus encourages us to do is to live simple and generous lives, to, um, to serve and love all the people around us, and to make uh, everywhere that we go more like God's beautiful kingdom. So that's a little lesson from the Lion King. Thank you. A reading from Ephesians. Remember that at one time, you Gentiles by birth, called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure, even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them, and they hur hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I'd like to share with you a passage from the first chapter of Colossians today. Uh, in addition to the readings we've had, uh, this one kind of sticks out in terms of my preaching for today. In it, Paul speaks about the love his hearers have for all the saints and for the whole community of faith. 
Paul emphasizes leading lives worthy of the Lord, living in faith and in hope, growing in the knowledge of God and being rescued from the power of darkness. Paul writes, in our prayers for you, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, for we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. You have heard of this hope before in the word of the truth, the gospel that has come to you. Just as it is bearing fruit and growing in the whole world, so it has been bearing fruit among yourselves from the day you heard it and truly comprehended the grace of God. For this reason, since the day we heard it, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Paul's purpose in writing to the Colossians is to encourage them and build them up as the church by reminding them of the gospel that has called them into being. So during Vacation Bible School, we talked a lot about remembering who we are in the gospel of Christ. We focused on the story of the Lion King. And if you haven't seen the movie, um, I mean, it's been out for a really long time and it's been uh, remade into kind of a live action version and it's been on stage. So I would think that a lot of you would know the story, but I'll recap just little bits of it here and there. Um, so it revolves around Simba, who is, who is born um, as the, the, the son of the Lion King Mufasa. He's heir to the throne. But Mufasa's brother Scar, who's the villain in the story, hatches a plot where Mufasa is killed and Simba is convinced uh, by Scar that he is to blame for his father's death. He's racked with guilt and so he runs away on this uh, self-imposed exile. And he leaves the whole pride and, and all the grasslands in the hands of uh, Scar, who is the bad king, the evil ruler. Years after his father's death and his own disappearance, Simba is confronted by Nala, his childhood friend. She says that the whole pride land and and the pride itself and all the animals are decimated because of Scar's leadership. And she pleads with him to come home and take his place as king, his rightful place, his birthright, and to overthrow Scar before it's too late and everything is lost. Simba doesn't want to go back. He's having a good old time. He's eating bugs with a warthog and a meerkat, and they just laze around all day, and, and he's like, I cannot go back. But that's just a cover for his guilt that he continues to feel. Well, the wise Rafiki urges him to look deeper. Rafiki says, who are you? Simba was born to be king of the animals, but here he is living the life of a bug eater and singing Hakuna Matata, which is like, no worries. But was he born to be that? No. He has forgotten who he is. So through a vision, Simba sees his father in a pool of water. And he realizes 
uh, after a while that he's actually looking at himself all grown up. And yet at the same time, seeing his father in him. Voiced by the, the by James Earl Jones, right? The, the ultimate in, in, uh, in godly voices, right? Mufasa tells his son, you have forgotten who you are. You have forgotten me. Remember who you are. As images of his father flood his memory, the reluctant and somewhat stubborn Simba does just that. He remembers. He remembers that he is the son of a king. He remembers that his father's spirit lives within him. He remembers that no matter what happened in the past, his future is still in front of him. As Simba watches his father's figure disappear in the sky, he remembers who he is. He gets all inspired and energized. He rushes off to find Nala, and they run back to save the kingdom from Scar. That word, remember, remember, sticks with me. Maybe it's because I, I so often forget who I am. I, too, am a daughter of the king whose spirit lives in me. The mistakes of my past do not define my future because of that. But I forget. And when I get annoyed with my kids, I forget that our creator designed them just for me to take care of. When I feel unappreciated, I forget that my Lord sees everything. When I get frustrated, I forget about the grace Christ extended to me on the cross and his command to forgive even 77 times. When I'm exhausted, I forget that Jesus promised rest to the weary. When I feel alone, I forget that God created each of us and created us for each other, to be a team, to be partners, to be stronger together. Emboldened by the promise that his father Mufasa lives in him, Simba returns to take his rightful place. Remembering who he is and what that calls him to be and do, he restores the Lion Kingdom back to the peace and harmony it knew under Mufasa. You have forgotten who you are, and so you have forgotten me. Those are powerful words, even for us as children of God. If we have forgotten who we are in Christ, then we have forgotten the essential Christ. Of course, the good news is that it's not about us mustering up tremendous courage or remarkable fortitude and commitment. It is about remembering. You know what happens when I remember? When I remember that I am the daughter of the king and Christ's spirit lives in me, I'm able to do more than I ever could in my own strength. Like Simba racing back to the pride lands, I can turn to face the challenges of my own day. When I remember who I am, Christ's spirit fills me. And I am reminded that I was made to be with the great I am. So remember, remember that in your baptism, you were joined to Christ, and the Spirit of Christ now dwells within you. Remember that in Christ, 
the power of sin over you has been broken and you are able both to will and to do those things that honor God and reveals Christ to the world. Remember, God is at work in you. Look inside yourself and remember who you are. Amen. Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of a Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of a father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. 
Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. We pray especially for those suffering from extreme flooding around the world and destructive fires. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints, as you have received them into your heavenly home. So welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we receive from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, the earth is full of your glory. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. Give strength to your people, O Lord. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. may be seated for the hymn.
those of you at home who are receiving Holy Communion, please take your bread, the body of Christ given for you. And your cup, the blood of Christ shed for you. For those who are receiving uh, here, please come forward. The table is ready. Please come and receive. 